Hello and welcome to another video. It's good to have you along. My name is Elmo and today I'm going to be serious for once because I think this is a serious topic. I'm going to be talking about stage fright and what you can do to gradually overcome it and also what to do about haters. Now I have a bit of knowledge on the subject since I work as a music teacher and I'm going to be sharing a few tips with you. So I'll be right back after this intro. <laughs> Okay, so welcome back. Like I said, I'm talking about stage fright and haters and what to do about all that stuff, how to gradually get over stage fright. Now, first off, who am I to be talking about stage fright? Well, first off, uh, I work as a music teacher, so I've met children with stage fright or teenagers with stage fright. I've also experienced it myself, so I have first-hand knowledge of what's worked for me. And I also have knowledge of what's worked for other people. I used to have stage frights. The first gig I ever did, I was absolutely terrified. Second gig I did, I was so frightened, I stood with my back to the audience. And I've worked with, especially I, two people come to mind, but I'll be talking about one uh, young woman who was a great singer and a good piano player. And she was absolutely mortally ter terrified of performing. Now you'll often hear it said that you should confront the fear that you have, which in this case is performing in front of a crowd. Now, that's absolutely true. You need to face the fear at some point. But just kind of facing the fear going into the performance situation is jumping over a few things that you can do before the performance that will actually help. Now, instead of just going into the performance situation, you can do a few things. So, regardless of if you're speaking or if you're singing or if you're playing or performing anything else, uh, I'd suggest that you get someone you trust to and perform to them. So it can be your mother, also, although your mother will just say, you're the best ever. So uh, there might be someone else, a family member, uh, a friend that you trust, a teacher that you trust. Perform your material for that person. And it doesn't have to be that the teacher or the friend or the family member stands and looks at you while you do it. They can go into another room. So you do it once uh, while they're in the other room, then you get them into the same room and you can even have them standing with their back to you because it can be intimidating having someone looking at you while you're performing. And you do it again so that they're ha they have their back turned. Then you do it so that they're looking at you. Then you can get more friends in or more family members, more people you trust and perform for a slightly larger crowd. Then you can go in front of an even larger crowd and then you can do the performance or something to that effect at least. Now this is what happened with me when I was teaching. Uh, she was, uh, the student I had who was absolutely terrified of performing, she was 15 or 16 at the time and she, she's a great singer. She plays piano quite well, but she was a great singer. And I've never seen anyone be so frightened of performing. Now, what we did was that I went outside into the hallway and she played and sang the song. Then I came into the classroom. It's by no means soundproof the space we're in. So I heard everything she did and I knew that she knew that I heard everything that she did. Then I sat at my computer because she said, you can't look at me while I play or sing. So I sat at my computer and pretended I was doing something at my computer. She did the song again and then we played it together. So I was supposed to perform with her, so just basically filling in a bit. Uh, she did most of the work. So I played with her and it went really well. I could tell she was really nervous and she was shaking after each performance. Then what we did, we got a few of her classmates in people who she really genuinely liked and trusted and she performed the song for them. Now, 
at that time it had become time to go to dress rehearsal, so we went to dress rehearsal, there was a bit of a crowd there, and we did the same thing again. And it really, it really helped her. I asked her every time, how are you feeling? And she said, slightly better, and it, she kind of, that helped her get over the whole thing gradually. Then we did the actual proper show. That was her stepping in front of her big fear, performing in front of a crowd, and she pulled it off. She was really nervous, I could tell, but uh, it went really well. She was absolutely incredible. Now, so that's one thing you can do. Take baby steps instead of just jumping right into the overwhelming situation of performing in front of a large crowd. Uh, what else can you do? Well, one thing that I've noticed is that my own uh, stage fright and the stage fright of the people that I've worked with has very often been linked to their own level of self-criticism. I was very self-critical when I was growing up and practicing and so was uh, the girl that I talked about and uh, I just basically told her that you need to realize this. You're your own worst critic. No one else is as critical of you as you. But she was thinking that basically everyone would be just as critical. Uh, the thing to realize is that every audience that you perform to wants you to succeed. Speaking in front of an audience, they want you to succeed, partly because that's just human nature, and partly because who wants to listen to something that's a train wreck? It, it's not fun. Uh, so they want you to succeed. Now, the other thing to keep in mind here is that when you're performing, uh, you're living the performance. You feel it with every fiber of your being. You experience it in a way that's totally different to the audience, because they don't have your perspective. They're watching you perform it, uh, they're w listening to you perform it, you're living the performance. So they won't notice mistakes as much as you do. Not even seasoned professionals will notice your mistakes as much as you will. Uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Then, you might be worried that people will hate you anyway. And this was also the case with a couple of the people that I've worked with, where they said they'll have to listen to comments at school about their performance. And that's absolutely true. You might have to listen to comments later on. But keep in mind who these comments are coming from. I've had this experience quite recently on my YouTube channel with a couple of uh, people who shall re remain anonymous um, writing very unflattering and partly obscene things to me, calling me names and so on. And uh, there is one thing that these people have in common, both these people on my YouTube channel and the people who hate elsewhere. Most of them have never done what you're doing. Keep that in mind. They've never stood on stage and performed. Sure, if you're a public speaker and you're speaking at school, most people have spoken publicly in front of the class, but they've been forced into doing it. This is a different situation. You're actually doing something out of your own free will. You're contributing something. You're creating something. These people have not. And that's something you have to keep in mind. Why should you listen to someone whose own accomplishments in your field are roughly zero? You shouldn't. This was the case with both of the people who commented on a couple of my videos, uh, basically spewing excrement at me. Okay, so you might get criticism from time to time from people who have actually done what you've done, but it won't be the kind of criticism where they go, ha ha, you suck. It'll be uh, much more constructive criticism, and you want that. That's something that you want when you're developing. Um, it's something along the lines of, that was good, you could think about this, and uh, you could think about that. That's good stuff. But uh, you will also sometimes meet with people who go, ha ha, you suck. 
and these are the ones who have never done anything like what you're doing. They basically contribute nothing. Ignore those people. Those people feel bad about themselves and try to make themselves feel better by pushing other people down. You've probably met those kinds of people, so you know what I'm talking about. Okay, those are basically the tips that I have for you to help you with stage fright. I know there are other tricks uh, that you can do, psychological things that you can work on and so forth, um, but I've never actually tried those firsthand, so I won't go into them. If you know some good tricks that have worked for you or for someone you know, please comment below, let me know and more importantly, let other people know because I want the discussion going below where people contribute. Now, if you're thinking about leaving a comment below to the effect of, hey, you suck, you bearded, long-haired hippie, well, why not just do everyone a favor and not post it? Because you're not contributing anything by posting a comment like that. And what's more, kids might read that and think that's an okay way to express yourself, when really it's not. Keep in mind, kids actually read this stuff. So, uh, I hope you liked the video, I hope you get something out of these tips and I hope to have a proper discussion, <laughs> hoping against hope, this is YouTube anyway, um, where we have a proper discussion below as to what works and what doesn't. And there are also other good videos out there, you can just Google Stage Fright or search on YouTube for Stage Fright, you'll probably find other good videos on the topic. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, yeah, support me on Patreon if you so wish, because that helps me make more of these videos. Thank you, no playing today, because this was what it was. <laughs> I hope it was good. Take care. See you. Bye.